Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business from Daryl K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium. We've got a battle between two top 25 teams who happen to be bitter rivals as number 12 and undefeated Oklahoma State comes to the town to take on the 25th ranked Texas Longhorn. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson, along with my quarterback, Joel Klatt, and welcome to Austin, Texas, Oklahoma State, Texas. A big rivalry game, usually a high-scoring game. And as for the Texas Longhorns, they're trying to bounce back from their Red River loss last week to Oklahoma. And, folks, we're going to get an opportunity to see one of the best players in the nation. His name is Bijan. And like Dijon, this kid could cut the mustard. I, I was going to wait for when you were going to break that out. You got it right into the open. I love it. Listen, I've been texting you all week. I've been so excited to get down here. You know why? Bijan Robinson is quite clearly one of the most dynamic offensive players in all of college football. And in an awkward year where everybody is losing at the top of college football, here's a guy, even with two losses, I think can make a push towards a Heisman Trophy. He's that good. He's that dynamic. Now, on the other side, Spencer Sanders, the quarterback back for Oklahoma State. He has to limit the mistakes. He threw three interceptions against Baylor in their last game. They were able to overcome that and win the game. He can't do that today against a high-powered Texas team. If he plays clean, then maybe they can get another one of those victories that Coach Stoops was talking about here in Austin for Mike Gundy. All right, Oklahoma State coming off the bye. They should be nice and fresh for this one. Time now to go downstairs and join the third member of our team on the sideline, the All-American girl, Jenny Taft. Well, guys, no loss is easy, but blowing a 21-point lead against your rival, Oklahoma, yeah, it hurts. When we sat down with head coach Steve Sarkeesian yesterday, he said our team has an ultimate goal of playing Oklahoma again in the Big 12 championship game. That only happens with a response today. Safe to say Oklahoma State got their attention real quick this week. Defensively, they must be better. Moro Ojuo told me that every player on that D-line must take it personally stopping the run and something else I'll be monitoring today guys quarterback Casey Thompson he injured his throwing thumb last week and admitted to us yesterday it still hurts when he's throwing he received treatment all week and it was very clear in warm-ups he was trying to keep it loose keep stretching it out we'll see how he handles that adversity today guys all right Jenny thank you Texas won the toss will receive what a perfect day for football cooled off last night folks so today 66 degrees at kickoff time here in Austin for this rivalry game between Oklahoma State and Texas it's a series that dates back to 1916 when they met in San Antonio the Longhorns lead it 26 to 9 and then one two straight. Oklahoma State, their last game, they beat Baylor 24-14 in Stillwater two weeks ago. And Texas losing to Oklahoma in Red River 55-48. Mike Gundy, truly one of the great coaches in America. He's done so much with this Oklahoma State program, and he'll be facing Steve Sarkeesian on the other sideline in his first year. Cowboys and Longhorns, here we go. And this one into the end zone for a touchback, and that brings on Casey Thompson. I'm really interested to see that thumb early in this game that Jenny just told us about. He's got it wrapped. He looked good yesterday in practice, and he has been excellent ever since he entered the starting lineup. Since he entered the starting lineup here for Texas, they average 52 points per game. This guy's preparation, his perseverance, has been second to none. Can't wait to watch him today against Oklahoma State. Casey Thompson, 20 of 34, 388, five touchdowns, no picks, sack three times. Last week against OU, first and 10 at the 25. And they'll give it to B. John Robinson over the right side with a lane, and he'll gain seven and a half eight on the play Jason Taylor with the tackle offensively for UT some change-ups on the offensive line Derek Herstetter is going to go from left guard out to right tackle it's his more natural position they feel like they'll be better up front because of it and then on the outside you've got some absolute speedsters Xavier Worthy the true freshman he broke out onto the scene last week with over 200 yards and Joshua Moore as well he can run deep down the field and this is going to be a tough test for Oklahoma State second down and two at the 33 
And they hand it off. Robinson running right with the first down and more. And let's go to the defense for the Cowboys. This is a very good defense. This is a defense that is veteran. They're experienced. They rotate a lot of guys up front, try to stay fresh and get after the quarterback. These two linebackers, they're active. They're older players, very strong in the middle. And then the secondary is one of the most experienced and veteran secondaries in the entire sport. And I love to watch them attack the football after the pass. So a first down for Texas at the 38-yard line. Robinson, the single setback. Thompson wants to throw it, steps up in the pocket, on the move now, tucks it, and he'll get out of bounds with a solid gain of six yards. Devin Harper there chasing him. This defense for Oklahoma State, they do a lot of different things. Again, with veteran players, you can line up in several different looks, a lot of exotic looks. They run a 4-2-5. That means four defensive linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Because of that, thus they have three safeties on the field, and they can make things look very difficult for the quarterback. So Casey Thompson's got his work cut out for him. Second down and four at the 44. Opening series for Texas. Watch this. A little trickery. And this is Robinson down the sideline, high stepping, cuts it in and goes down at the Oklahoma State 30. Devin Harper with a tackle, but it's a gain of 25. Using Bijan Robinson as a bit of a decoy here, they're going to bring Keelan Robinson, the transfer from Alabama, followed Stark over here into Austin. You see the speed. He transfers from Alabama, and this is a guy that has some ability, and I think he's going to get a few more carries here today. First down and 10. Ball at the 31. Thompson looking. Thompson standing strong in the pocket. And he finds Bijan Robinson. And Bijan Robinson powers his way inside the Oklahoma State 15-yard line for a gain of 17. Harper again with the tackle. Great running backs only become dynamic offensive threats when they can do everything here. Motion out of the backfield, lines up as a wide receiver. A nice little slant route, catches it well, and then makes somebody miss. 12th reception of the season for Bijan Robinson now on the ground and he'll fall down close to the 10. This is the area of the field where Oklahoma State is very good is in the red zone. Normally what you see is they'll give up some yardage here and there but then they'll force you to kick. They force you to bring that field goal kicker out and settle for a field goal. That's been a strength of theirs. They're in the top 20 in college football and touchdown percentage given up for Mike Gundy inside the red zone. So this is imperative that Texas on a quality series can punch this into the end zone. Second down and seven at the 11 on a drive that started at the 25. Robinson is the pistol back. And Thompson lobs it corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Nobody there. Xavier Worthy. The talented freshman. Looks like he was the target or either Joshua Moore. Jarek Bernard Converse with a Good coverage on the outside, just let Worthy kind of sink right into his lap. And now here's that third down that I was talking about. Trying to force a field goal after a positive offensive series. This would be a big win for Oklahoma State here. Eighth play of the drive, third and seven at the 11. Thompson. Thompson guns it underneath, caught first down. Joshua Moore. Jason Taylor defensively for OK State. As Thompson's going to put his eyes on this right side, he just has to wait for a moment. And now you see that route, just a little bit of a delayed slant. It comes into the inside, and that's a beautiful ball from Thompson. It does not look like that thumb is bothering him. That was accurate right on the money. Casey Thompson starts this game four of five. First and goal at the two-yard line. Here's the handoff. Bijan Robinson met at the line of scrimmage and power his way forward and get close to the one. Tyler Lacey with the tackle. Steve Sarkeesian is one of the most creative play callers down near the goal line. I talked about it in Big Noon kickoff. A lot of times what he'll do is he gives his quarterback the option to either run it or have a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He's got one of those up top right now. Second down and goal at the one. Robinson again. Robinson turns a corner and does not get in. Oklahoma State denies him. Lamont Bishop lowered his shoulder and just knocked him out of bounds. 
Here's the run. Watch this. And again, it's Bishop as well as Bernard Converse. The corner 24 had the great coverage earlier in this series, and he's able to knock Robinson out at the one yard line. So that brings up third down and goal at the one yard line. Oklahoma State, can they hold? This is Texas's opening series out of the offset eye. Robinson left, cuts it in. Touchdown, Texas. Bijan Robinson. You gotta get those linebackers blocked. It's so hard to do, but right there, bang. Two for one. Bijan Robinson then is able to squeeze into the end zone for a touchdown. Brings on Cameron Dicker for the extra point, and it's good. 11 plays covering 75 yards. Texas eats up. Four minutes and 52 seconds. Bijan Robinson. Tater. UT up. 7 zip. Big Dude Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected with AT&T 5G. And by Progressive Insurance, save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. All right, time now for Progressive Game Flow. You're in Austin, Texas, Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, opened back in 1924, these two teams. Pillars in the Big 12 Conference. E. John Robinson with his ninth rushing touchdown of the year on that 11 play drive. Robinson touched it seven times, five runs, and two catches. Touchback. And that'll bring out Oklahoma State's offense, Spencer Sanders, the quarterback. Well, he's a guy who's coming off of his worst start of the year with three interceptions, but he does run hot and cold. And last year against Texas, he played really well. In fact, he threw for 400 yards and a nice win for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. He's got to recreate some of that magic, and he does have some players back and healthy on the outside at wide receiver. So first and 10 at the 25. And Sanders drops back deep. Guns it to the sideline. And incomplete. He had his man, Tay Martin. Martin laying out for it, just couldn't hold on. Boy, this is an aggressive play call. You got to love it from Mike Gundy. And that one probably should have been caught. Tay Martin, the senior, he's a transfer from Washington State. Been here for a couple of years. Struggled with his health earlier this season. But he's back, he's healthy, and they had a chance there for a big one. Second down and 10 of the 25. Play fake. Sanders again looking. Drops it off to Jalen Warren. Texas ready. And Luke Brockermeyer, the linebacker, with the tackle, a one-yard gain offensively for OSU. A couple of transfers up front. Josh Stills, Danny Godlewski. They come in from West Virginia, Miami of Ohio, respectively, and they've done a nice job in the run game. Jalen Warren, the running back, the, everything in this offense really goes through him. He's been a workhorse and a very good transfer from Utah State. He's the type of guy they're going to need to get the ball 20, 25 times. Third down and nine of the 26. Texas with a chance to get off the field. Oklahoma State, they give it to Warren. Warren slashing, cutting, and it looks like he has the first down. Anthony Cook with the tackle. But Jalen Warren, from Salt Lake City, he may be a little bit short. Yeah, he's got to get to that 35, and you see right when his elbow hits, he is just short, and that's going to be a stop for Texas. Oklahoma State gambled a little bit. They saw two deep safeties, Gus, and they thought we could sneak a run in there for a first down, and he was oh so close to getting that ball all the way to 35. Three consecutive 100-yard games for Jalen Warren coming into this one. So Tom Hutton will punt it away. Oklahoma State three and out. Deshaun Jamison will be back deep as they take a look. Well, they're going to take a look at this, but this was an excellent spot by the officials in real time. As soon as that right elbow hit, 
Where is the ball? There you go. It's just short. Terrific job by the officials. Come in, spot it accurately. This one will stand, and it'll be fourth down for Oklahoma State. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Fourth down. Michael Vandevelt, Michael Vandevelt our referee today. So Tom Hutton will punt it from the 20. Deshaun Jameson is the deep man. And Hutton, end over end kick. Jameson comes up the field. It. Looking for a lane. Going backwards. Gets a block. Up the sideline. No, and a flag. 42-yard punt, eight-yard return. I guess that flag is way back deep, basically at the line of scrimmage just past it. Usually that means that some type of hold early on in the return. During the kick, holding number 37, receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down, Texas. Timeout on the field. All right, coming up, B. John Robinson and the Texas offense. Longhorns up 7-0 over Oklahoma State. Fox Bet Super 6 has had back-to-back -back big noon contest winners, and you'll still have a chance, a free chance, to make it three weeks in a row. Just scan the QR code now to enter and play for free. You could be the next $10,000 winner. So Texas will start first down and 10 at their own 15. Robinson in the backfield. And here comes Thompson looking with time incomplete. Joshua Moore, the receiver targeted, and a flag. Holding number 67, offense, half the distance to goal, still first down. It's Tope Imade, and in his sixth year of eligibility here in Texas, making his first start today. He's the guy that's going to come over and he's going to try to block right here and he's just going to reach out and get a little hold right there as Thompson setting up trying to get the ball down the field and Thompson over the middle incomplete Joshua Moore the target once again so that'll bring up second down and long need 18 this Texas offense talked about wanting to stretch the field both width-wise and vertically, but they have not been able to, so far to get the ball pushed down the field. Washington in motion. They swing it out to him. Washington, oh, what a beautiful tackle at the 10-yard line. Christian Holmes says, come here. Hey, you know what I love about Christian Holmes? I'm down there on pregame, and I'm looking at him. He's got the best socks in college football. <laughs> Folks, look at the socks. I, I mean, old school, right? I love that. Look at those. And a great play on the outside. That's a veteran corner right there making a play. Third down and 15 for Texas at the 10. Thompson. Dancing. And incomplete. He had pressure in his face. At Oklahoma State defense, folks, they're veterans and they're tough. Tyler Lacey, number 89 with pressure, and UT will have to punt it away. Oklahoma State with an opportunity to get great field position. You know, they have such a high pressure rate, getting pressure on the quarterback, but it's not because of blitzes normally. Normally what you see is that they've got coverage sacks and pressures, and there was another example. Casey Thompson having to hold the ball. Intentional grounding, number 11, offense. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. Well, he was not outside of the tackle box. 
he got hit and he was trying to throw. I thought that there was a seat receiver in the area. I, I don't know about that call. Presley, the deep man for OK State at the 50. Cameron Dicker out of the back of his own end zone. Presley, he'll get a shot at it. And Presley will get inside Texas territory before being taken down. Another flag on the play here. You know, Gus, I think they're going to call this a block in the back. Looks like. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 12, receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down, timeout. 7 0 Texas. Spencer Sanders and the Oklahoma State offense on the field when we return. Return to glory with an ice cold Dr. Pepper. The one fans deserve. Down here in Texas, Joel, Dr. Pepper is a tradition. First and 10 of the 35, Oklahoma State three and out on their first series. Sanders winds up, double clutches it, throws it. Tate Martin with the catch. Let's take a look at the Texas defense. Well, this defense is going to be without one of their starters. Jacoby Jones broke his foot last week against Oklahoma, so Alfred Collins is going to be in there, a younger player at the defensive end position. Overshone the linebacker. He's the most talented player they have. He's a missile, too. He can fly around. This is a veteran's secondary. But they have not been great this year, giving up a lot of big plays and a lot of missed tackles. Second down and seven at the 38. They run the option, the traditional option, nowhere. Spencer Sanders gobbled up. And he'll be tackled for a loss of one on the play. Why don't you see the regular option in college football, the old Oklahoma, Nebraska option? There's, it's just limiting because it's going one direction where now you have these RPOs that are just... It's evolved, Gus. You know, they're still running kind of triple option style or philosophical things with the RPO, the run pass option, and it attacks the entire field and not just one area of the field. Third down and eight at the 37. Sanders in trouble. Rolls out. And Sanders roughed up. Keandre Colbert right there to flag on the play. You know, he went up and grabbed him kind of on that back collar. It wasn't late. He still had the ball. He was still inbounds. But watch as he goes and grabs that back collar for a horse call right there. You see that right hand? That's when the flag came out. I think that's what they're discussing on the sideline. They went to Andre Colbert. Horse collar tackle, number 99. Boy, mistake there. I know Colburn's hustling. He's trying to do everything he can there, Gus. But, boy, there was nowhere to throw that ball. And that's going to be a nice stop for this Texas defense. And they're bailed out by that penalty. And Oklahoma State now gets a little bit of life and good field position. Colburn, he can run 6'2", 346. So a first down for the Cowboys at the 45. Near side throw. And it's caught. Owens down the sideline and he'll get inside Texas territory close to the 40. Yeah, and this Texas defense in the secondary, in particular the corners and the safeties, they play very soft. You can pitch those easy throws out there all day long if you want to if you're the Cowboys. Gain of 12 from the 43. First down. Warren slashing through the hole. Goes to the sideline daylight. And he's down at the 29. Josh Thompson grabs him, but that's a 14-yard run. And this run game is the engine for this Oklahoma State offense, and Warren is a guy that's going to start getting the ball quite a bit. First down at the 29. Play fake. Sanders looking over the middle, and he throws a strike at the 10-yard line to Tay Martin. Oklahoma State moving it now. B.J. Foster brings him down after a 20-yard gain. Good patience, allowing Martin to get into that soft spot of the zone, and then a very good ball there from Sanders. First down and goal at the nine. 
And it's Sanders with the run. He'll spin and get to the six. Thompson again defensively. Quarterbacks that have had the ability to use their legs and run have really hurt Texas so far this year. If you're a Texas fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This defense has not stopped the run very well at all, in particular against their more quality opponents, namely Arkansas and Oklahoma. And here on this series, Oklahoma State's run game has gotten loose a little bit. Second down and goal at the six-yard line. Warren. And he'll get inside the five. Joel, I'll tell you what, these teams are playing fast. Yeah. And this is where Texas defense has got to rise to the occasion and force a field goal here from Oklahoma State. You can't settle against Texas's offense. You cannot settle for field goals. So this is a big snap here for Oklahoma State. Got to punch it into the end zone. Third down goal at the four. Warren in the backfield. And he'll throw the fade in the corner. Incomplete. Tay Martin had it. But Josh Thompson may have gotten a hand in it to punch it out. Really good throw from Spencer Sanders. This one's right on the money. You got to... Feeling Tay Martin's as he's got to corral that it hits his hands even though Thompson is coming up to defend right there That ball's got to be secure brought into his chest foot down. That should be a touchdown for Oklahoma State now They got to settle for the kick Tanner Brown comes in to attempt a 21 yarder And it's good seven to three Cowboys will settle for the field goal Back to Austin after this. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. And by High Noon Hard Seltzer. Please, sun sip responsibly. Welcome back to Austin. In their last four meetings, Texas and Oklahoma State have played four one-possession games, including two that went to overtime in 2017 and 2020. They've split the four games with Texas winning the last two. You touched on it earlier, what Mike Gundy has built here at Oklahoma State. And ever since, you know, 2010, it's been the second best program in the Big 12. Brown sends it away. And Jamison will start from the goal line. Jamison up the sideline. Nice return. He'll get across the 25. Coming up next on Fox. The ALCS continues with a huge game to the Red Sox. Take on the Astros. Catch the action next on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Correa and Altuve went deep in game one. See how this one pans out. Here's your probable starters. Nathan Avaldi, Luis Garcia. Should be a good one. That's a heck of a series right there. You, 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 you missed playing Hernandez, by the way. He's a great team. You miss playing baseball? No. <laughs> you know why? Why? Baseball is a game of failure, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're a star if you can do it three out of ten, right? Xavier Worthy. And flags. <laughs> I think Robinson got a little bit of a head start. They had both backs to the left side of Casey Thompson try to lead out in front of the speedy freshman Xavier Worthy. And it looked like Robinson just got Full a start. Number five. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. As he is, he's going to jump out. Now he's going to lead for Worthy out in front. You see him just get a head start. And now Texas again is going to be backed up behind the chains. And off schedule in this series. That's five penalties on Texas already. They average five. And they'll swing it out. More and more tackled at the line of scrimmage. Jason Taylor, well done. But how about we talked about Mike Gundy? 54 years now. 54 years old now. Remember when he was 40, folks? He told everybody in his 17th year at Oklahoma State, the winningest coach in Oklahoma State history. 15 straight winning seasons and 15 straight bowl games after going 4-7 and seven in his first season in 2005. 
And the hair keeps getting better and better as he gets older. Second and 15 at the 22. Here's the handoff. Robinson with a big hole. And John Robinson crosses the third. Up to the 32, Devin Harper with the tackle. Game nine. Well, now on third down, though, this was always going to be interesting coming in. Oklahoma State's the best third down team in the Big 12. They were the number one team on third down in the country last year, and Texas is without Jordan Whittington, who was their number one target on third down. So I'm interested to see where Casey Thompson and Steve Sarkeesian try to go with the football here on critical downs. B. John Robinson lines up as a wide receiver. Empty backfield for Casey Thompson. Third and six. Thompson into the middle. Caught. Washington down the sideline. And he'll go down to the 10. Jason Taylor with a tackle. But it's a 58-yard gain, and Casey Thompson put it on the money. They're going to try to double-team Casey Thompson. Watch these two Oklahoma State players, and Thompson's just going to split them and go right down the middle of the field. Great read by Casey Thompson, and there you go. It's a big completion to Washington, who is the guy who is replacing Jordan Whittington. So it's the same position as Whittington, who got all those third-down targets, and they go back to that spot, that slot receiver that can exploit the middle of the field. First down and 10 at the 11. Thompson again. Thompson in trouble, and he'll just throw it at the feet of Jared Wiley. Tyler Lacey with pressure. Rounding number 18 was in the area. Second down. And remember what I said about the pressure rate from Oklahoma State? You look at the statistics and you think, oh, man, they're a great pass rushing team. And yes, while they're aggressive up front and they can get to the passer, generally it happens because the quarterback has to hold the ball. The coverage sacks, those, those defensive backs are so good. You see the sacks per game, the QB pressure rate, all first in the Big 12. But it's really a product of the veteran secondary never getting beat. And there was a great example. Second down and 10 at the 11. Robinson hopping through the hole. No, it's Thompson. As he gets out of bounds. Great deception by this Texas offense. Run pass option. That's what you talk about all the time. Yeah, yeah and, and here's another one of those opportunities where Steve Sarkeesian's going to have to give his quarterback those types of options. And when I say, well, what do you mean by give them options? I mean, the play caller needs to give the quarterback the ability to make the offense right. Some sort of full field read so that he can read the width of the defense and then go where the defenders aren't. It sounds simple, but it's something that is very effective. Third and nine at the 10. Thompson off his back foot in the end zone. And he's out of bounds. Dixon couldn't get a foot in. Check out Colin Oliver getting the pressure, and he just couldn't get enough ball. Steam on that pass on the outside, so it floated. Because it floated, it was late getting there, and then once he secures it, it looks like that next step was on the line. Remember, it's control, then a body part or a foot in. And it didn't look like he had it there. And Texas will have to settle for a field goal. Brings on Cameron Dicker last week against Oklahoma. Two for two with a long of 41 yards. This one from 28 yards away. And he nails it. 10-3 Texas. 12 versus 25 in the Big 12. Today's game is featured on the free-to-play Fox Bet Super 6 app. One of the questions in this contest is which team will win and by how many points, Oklahoma State or Texas? There are chances to win all season long. Uh, both defenses on the last couple of series. Gus Forson field goals. Send it away. Dominic Richardson is the deep man for Oklahoma State. And this went into the end zone for a touchback. So 
Oklahoma State offense found some success in the middle part of the field on their last series, and they did that by exploiting the soft coverage that Texas is playing in the secondary. Normally what you see from Texas is two high safeties way back there, and then their corners also play soft. So you can draw little wide receiver bubbles on the outside and handing the football off in the interior of the offensive line, getting downhill with Jalen Warren, I think is going to be effective for them here on this series if they want to get back to it. First down. Sanders rolling, drops it off. And a nice gain as Cassidy will get to the 41 before being taken down. Great Cassidy, Redshirt Jr. from Austin. I just wonder about the confidence level of this Texas defense after what happened a week ago, giving up over 600 yards to OU. Warren running right. And Warren knocked backwards. Great job by Alfred Collins, the sophomore. One-yard gain, second and nine. Remember, he's in for the injured Jacoby Jones, and they need him to be strong in particular against that run game. Sanders in trouble. Breaks a tackle on the move. And flips it out of bounds. That'll bring up third and nine. Great pressure by Byron Murphy. Freshman from DeSoto. Now it's going to be on Oklahoma State having to step up. Trying to make a play in the passing game. Tay Martin, number one, is the target. Whether it's third down, normal course of offense, you've got to know where Tay Martin is at all times. That's where Spencer Sanders wants to go with the football. Third and nine at the 40-yard line. Sanders underneath. He's got Presley. And Presley dives forward and picks up the first. And that should take us to the end of the first quarter. 10-3 Texas. Oklahoma State moving the ball. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business, Oklahoma State, and Texas. Russ Johnson, Joel Klatt, Jenny Taft with you. Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium. First down for the Cowboys at the 49. Jalen Warren, the deep man. Play action. Sanders to the sideline. Nice throw. Great catch. Tate Martin, first down. Gained about 14, maybe 15 on the play, but there is a flyer. Going to be a hold on that offensive line. You know. Holding number 72. Offense, 10-yard penalty. Still first down. 72 is Josh Sills. As Sills is trying to block as the left guard. He's working against, it looks like, Ojimo, Moro Oj Ojimo, just tackles him down to the ground. It's so interesting to me. It's, it, it's fascinating. When they've been just running the football with Jalen Warren, they've had a lot of success. Four carries, 25 yards, six a pop. When they're just throwing it out to the outside, taking advantage of that soft defense, they're having a lot of success. When they're trying to throw it down the field, that's when the pass rush is showing up. Sideline again. This time, it's Rashad Owens with the catch. Number seven. Those short completions are there. The run game is there, but when you try to throw it deep into a soft coverage, you've got to hold the ball as a quarterback. That's what has allowed the defensive line to have some success. Warren trying to get downhill, pick up a couple. Jalen Ford, number 41, brings him to the ground. There's a good opportunity here after that holding call for Texas to try to get off the field. Oklahoma State trailing 10 to 3. They're one of three on third down conversions to start this game. Texas showing blitz. Here they come. Sanders backpedaling and incomplete. Good pressure by Texas. 
And the Cowboys are forced to punt. Great stunt here. You're going to get Alfred Collins from the defensive end position. He's coming around, and then you're also going to get a blitz on the outside. And that pressure makes Sanders move to his left, and he's trying to fade away and get the ball down the field and just can't. Tom Hutton punting from the 34. Jamison back deep inside his own 10. Jamison from the 11. And he's tackled and brought down immediately. A 40-yard punt. And that's where Casey Thompson and the Texas offense will start when we come back. Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Here it is. Texas up 10-3 over Oklahoma State. They have driven the ball down a couple of times, had to settle for a field goal there, 138 total yards, but those five penalties have stalled them out a little bit. And on the Oklahoma State side, a couple of good offensive series, but have not been able to punch it in the end zone. Texas starting deep in their own territory at the 12-yard line, first down. Bijan Robinson. And he'll power forward. Robinson picking up five. Jaden Jernigan with the tackle. Love this kid. I mean, he's so good. Six foot, 214 pounds. He is strong, over 300 pounds in terms of squat. He's fast, but it's more about his ability to stop and start. That's what makes him so good. Second down at four. This time it's Keelan Robinson. You remember watching Reggie? And Reggie Bush, what made him so dynamic is he could be going full speed one direction. And then the next instant, he was He's going gone. full speed the other direction, right? It's, and it's that ability to stop, jump, cut, go a different direction. That's kind of what Bijan has. And he grew up idolizing Reggie. We actually, hit, they hadn't met yet. So yesterday, I put him on a FaceTime call in our meeting with Reggie and watched him meet one of his idols for the first time. It was very cool. Third down and three and incomplete. Remember, Bijan Robinson is from Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> West Coast influence, Reggie Bush, the legend. This kid's got a chance, number five. Well, and then in an unpredictable year of college football where the best team in Georgia doesn't have a clear star for the Heisman, and we've got all the traditional powers having lost already, it's not out of the realm of possibility if Texas were able to go through this stretch, win some games, find themselves in the Big 12 title, that he could win a Heisman Trophy this year. Presley lets it take a bounce. And Texas Adonis is Georgia the best team in the country? Right now. I don't want to see that defense. Ooh, they look good. Back to Austin in a minute. Want to tackle your fitness? Hey Siri, tell me more about Apple Fitness Plus. The Dos Equis Ultimate College Football Road Trip with our own Mark Titus and Charlotte Wilder is at Texas this week. Head to at CFB on Fox social platforms to check out all the behind-the-scenes fun in Austin. Hi, ah, here's Charlotte. Mark, saw Charlotte on the elevator coming to the game today. Enthusiastic. Come back and have that jump. Just go experience the campus, you know what I mean? Oh, no, man, that will be fun. Right? First down at the 34. And it's Warren. But we did get a chance to eat some good barbecue last Oh, time. we absolutely did. Flag on the play. Braden Cassidy. Watch at the end of the play. Play's already over, play's already over, play's already over, and the extra shove. They'll give you a little beat after the whistle, but not that extra shove. And that is just an absolute mental air from Cassidy. A red shoe shirt junior right here from Austin, Texas. Played his high school ball at Westlake. So that'll make it second down and 26.
Here comes pressure, and they give it to Warren. Warren will get through the hole. Look at him crawl forward. That's all the way up to the 32-yard line. What a great extra effort. This kid is a serious football player, partner. Uh, and he's had such a great road to get to this moment. He was at Snow Junior College, was the National Junior College Offensive Player of the Year back in 2018, transferred to Utah State, had some success at Utah State, bet on, bet on himself and said, I'm going to go and I'm going to roll the chips, put them in the middle of the table, and head to Oklahoma State. And he's come here and really solidified this offense this year after all the injuries that they've had, in particular at the wide receiver position. 5'8", 215, third and 16. Sanders will let fly. Sanders over the middle. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. Deshaun Jameson wanted to bring it down. This is that dangerous style of throw right over the middle, trying to get the deep in cut. Rashad Owens just can't get up high enough. Owens is a tall player, 6'2, 200 pounds. Tried to get up there. And Sanders got away with one very easily could have been picked off after the tip. So Oklahoma State will have to send it away. Hutton. Jamison signaling for the fair catch and has it at the 34, 39 yard punt. 10 3, Texas with the lead and the ball. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, can third-rate Cincinnati remain unbeaten? Number 10, Michigan State, they look to do the same. They're at Indiana and Texas A&M. Back in the top 25 after their upset over Bama, they visit Missouri. Gus, Joel, we'll see you guys at the break. All right, Stoner, thank you very much. First down and 10 of the 34 for the Longhorns. And uh, give it to Robinson. Hard cut. Bijan Robinson inside the Oklahoma State 40. Tanner McAllister with a tackle, but it's a pickup of 26 yards. This is when Robinson is at his best, when he's running that stretch play. He's going one direction, and he gets the defense to stretch out. Then he can find one crease. He puts that foot in the ground, and he can jump cut into that crease. There's the explosion I'm talking about right there. That is a case study in what makes him such a great player. What a beautiful run. First down at the Oklahoma State 40 for Texas. And Thompson hit as he throws incomplete and a flag. Casey Thompson took a lick. Devin Harper just lowered the boom. Jarek Bernard Converse at corner is going to get called for a pass interference here. Interference number 24. Defense, 15 yard penalty automatic. First out. Here's the coverage on the outside. You're going to see there's a grab, and then he gets all over him before the ball arrives with that left arm trying to find Xavier Worthy. They haven't been able to establish Xavier Worthy a week after he went for over 200 yards against OU. 216 to be exact. Robinson running to the near side and another great gain close to the first down marker let's go downstairs and check in with JT well you guys mentioned Bijan Robinson admiring Reggie Bush as a kid well why it all started with grandpa Cleo Robinson he's been an official for decades currently an instant replay official for the Pac-12 guys he was on the field for the Bush push he used to bring home old school tape of Reggie for he and Bijan to watch and I know you mentioned that FaceTime Joel it was pretty cool smiling so big and getting some high advice from Reggie as well. That's right, that's right. He was. Reggie was emphatic about it. Roshan Johnson now checks in second and one. And Roshan Johnson. Went from third string quarterback to running back last season due to injuries and ran for 646 yards and five touchdowns. He did a great job. And now Robinson will come back in. You want to know what the advice was, by the way, from Reggie? What was it? He was like, hey, man, you got to return punts. <laughs> <laughs> and Bijan was like, hey, I'd love to, but, you know, that my coaches don't put me there. And Reggie was like, no, 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 you don't understand. You need to return punts. <laughs> that was great. First down at the 13. Thompson. 
Touchdown, UT. Bijan Robinson showing his versatility. He can run it outside, inside, and catch it out of the backfield. 13-yard score, and Texas takes a 16-3 lead. They're going to exploit the man-to-man -man coverage. There's Robinson here, and here's his man player, the linebacker. He's just got an advantage, first of all, in alignment, and he takes off. Casey Thompson gets crushed in the backfield, and he's still able to put the ball on the money so that Robinson does not have to break stride. What a beautiful play design there from Steve Sarkeesian. Cameron Dicker in for the extra point, and it's good. Shades of... The other number five, the Heisman Trophy winning number five out of Southern California. This number five, can he get to New York? I think so. 17-3 Texas. Big Duke Saturday is sponsored by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. And by Dr. Pepper. Delicious ice cold Dr. Pepper. The one fans deserve. Welcome back, Bijan Robinson accounted for 48 of the 66 yards on the drive. Two touchdowns, one rushing, one receiving. And as you take a look at his numbers, I'll tell you what, he's looking like Reggie Bush today. They've had a couple high control winners here in Texas. How about this guy, Ricky Williams? 1998 run, Ricky run. And then the Tyler Rose himself, the great and legendary Earl Campbell. Can they get another one at Texas? Good chance. Very good chance. I mean, I, this is stating the obvious. It would have helped immensely if they could have held on and won last week, in particular with that one run that he had that was, I mean, it looked like Reggie cutting across the field, the stiff arm, the electricity. But like I said, I think the nature of this season and how it's playing out going to lend itself to somebody coming from a team that might be a non-traditional Heisman winner. Maybe it's Bichon. Dicker sends it away into the end zone. Let's take a look at some Bichon highlights. Well, on the first series, they were clearly going to establish him, and this is part of Sarkeesian's DNA is the entire offense runs through the running back, but the beauty of Bijan Robinson is that you can put him in so many different areas and he can attack the defense in so many different ways, whether it's outside in the run, he can get out of the backfield and catch the ball. We saw him lined up as a wide receiver and catch the ball. He makes people miss. He's got 10 touches on the, ten, uh, on the two TD drives. The other three drives for Texas, he didn't really touch the ball. I think that's a, probably a good blueprint. Here's an option. Warren, nice cut. He'll get to the 31, picks up six. That's the thing they used to say about Reggie Bush all the time. I was talking to Lamar Arrington recently, the Buckus Award-winning linebacker at Penn State. They say Reggie could juke you, then all of a sudden, he's gone. He's just gone. <laughs> yes. Second down and four at the 31. Play fake. Sanders, sideline, incomplete. Just haven't been sharp in the passing game. There have been things there for Oklahoma State, but Sanders has just been a bit high when trying to throw the football down the field, even outside the numbers. He's got to get that ball down, drive the ball into the frame of his wide receivers, in particular on a down like this on third and four. From the 31. Sanders again to throw. And is intercepted. Finally got away from him, and Deshaun Jamison makes him play. Fives are wild here in Austin. Bijan Robinson. Deshaun Jamison balling out. He's got the hitch route for a first down. I wonder if this ball may have slipped out of his hand because this is wildly inaccurate. Sanders is going to throw this ball way too far down the field for Rashad. Rashad Owens is just running a basic hitch. That means five yards and come back to the ball. And that ball was thrown at about six, way too high. An easy pick for Jamison, who goes upstairs and nabs it. First turnover of the game. Fifth interception by Sanders this year. He threw three last time he was on the field. 
Boy, you, I just get the sense that Steve Sarkeesian is going to go for the jugular here. Potential shot here in the next couple plays. First down at the 44. Thompson. And that one high and incomplete. Good coverage on that bubble screen again. This secondary is experienced. Bernard Converse, he's seen it all, so he reacted immediately and was right there as they were trying to execute that bubble screen on the left side. Second down and 10 at the 44. Bijan Robinson having a great first half. And Robinson, jitterbugging, cuts it inside, gets to the 40. I just text Reggie. And I said, Do you like this kid, Robinson? He said, you know, I see a lot of myself in here. Oh, uh oh. That's that's high praise. That is high praise. Second down. Thompson rolls out. Throws it underneath. Caught. Joshua Moore gets out of bounds. Texas is moving it easily. We always talk about Steve Sarkeesian. What's his major talent as a coach? Well, it's his ability to call plays. There are some guys that call plays offensively or defensively in our sport that are playing chess when everybody else is playing checkers. This is one of those guys. He is a brilliant play caller. He utilizes the personnel group, that's who's on the field, the formation, and then the concept or what you would probably think of as the actual play in order to attack the defense in ways that they just don't expect. First down and 10. Thompson looking. Thompson goes through his read. Sideline caught. Again, Joshua Moore. You talk about Sarkeesian. He coached under. Nick Saban, he coached under Pete Carroll, two great defensive minds, but he played under one of the greatest offensive minds, plural, in the history of the sport of college football. When he played at BYU, he was under Lavelle Edwards, and that that passing game from, from the BYU days there in the 80s and, and early 90s, that, I mean, that was basically the, the jumping off point to the modern college passing game. The air raid has its origins philosophically. Norm from, Chow. From the, Norm Chow. He was the offensive coordinator. So the West Coast college offense had its origins under Lavelle Edwards. And, and you know, it was interesting because we talked with Steve about what did you take from Lavelle, being a player for Lavelle. And we expected, didn't we expect him to say, like, oh, his brilliance, his offense, the concept. So, you know what he said? He believed in me as a player. That's what I took from him. I went to the sideline on a big third down. He said, what do you want to run? And I knew right there that I wanted to make sure that my players someday would also have that belief that Lavelle gave for me. Second down and 10. Robinson again. And think about some of the quarterbacks that played for BYU. Oh. Lavelle Edwards. Jim McMahon lit it up. He had over 40 records when he left. Ty Detmer. Ty Detmer. Robbie Bosco. Bosco? Jeez, man, I tell you, that's... And Steve Sarkeesian. Steve Sarkeesian was a heck of a player, and you just think of who he's been able to cut his teeth under as a coach. He's coached under Pete Carroll and Nick Saban. He played for Lavelle Edwards. I mean, that's that's the who's who in our sport. Third down and 10. Oh, it's intercepted. Jason Taylor down the sideline. Cowboys storming back. was gone like he knew it was coming he sank down into that route immediately right at the snap of the football that's great preparation that's a position and jason taylor brings his cowboys right back in this game what a play 85 yard interception return for a touchdown for oklahoma state his first interception of the year. What a big one against Texas on the road. Extra point good. They've got veterans on this Oklahoma State defense. They play hard and fast, and they're right back in this one. Don't forget. 
can find all of Joel's breaking the huddle content, including his weekly top 10 rankings at FoxSports.com, the Fox Sports app, and CFB on Fox social platforms. What are you going to be talking about this week? Probably this game a little bit. I tell you, it's just been so... It's been a breath of fresh air this year in college football. We've got so many great storylines. Teams that aren't normally up at the top. I mean, Cincinnati's number three. Wake Iowa, Forest. Wake Forest Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky. You know, it's been... This has been a wild year so far, and hopefully that continues. You think about what we've seen, even just in October, Gus. You know what? You're absolutely right. This October has been full of surprises with Alabama losing to an unranked team for the first time since 2007. Iowa is ranked second in the AP poll for the first time since 1985. Kentucky is 6-0 in football for the first time <laughs> since 1950. Wake Forest is 6-0 for the first time since 1944 when Pee Wee Walker was the head coach. You know who the head coach of that Excuse team? me, P. Head Walker. You know who the head coach of that Kentucky team was in 1950? Who? Bear Bryant. Says a whole lot there. First down and 10 of the 25. And Xavier Worthy. And he's tackled by Malcolm Rodriguez. I was in Alabama recently and they were talking about Bear. Last week I was in Alabama. And they, uh, they said when Bear walked, there were two things that were most important. God and the bear. And some people felt that the bear was God. <laughs> oh, so good. Second down at 11. Thompson. Oh, and he sacked his Oklahoma State defense. Now starting to pin back their ears. Malcolm Rodriguez, first man to him. Love watching Malcolm Rodriguez play. Number 20. One of these super seniors. He's played a lot of football. But he's coming into the season. And watch as he's going to come around that right edge of the offense. And he's going against Roshan Johnson. And he just continues. And three Cowboys in there. Oklahoma State. This pass rush. Their ability to put pressure on the quarterback. It's the best in the conference. One of the best in the nation. They do a great job. Third down and 17 at the 18. Thompson. Rattled a little bit now. Texas unraveling a tad bit. Xavier Worthy, the target. Not a very good-looking series for the Longhorns. No, and you, you just wondered what Thompson's confidence was going to be like after giving up that huge pick six on the last series to Jason Taylor. And then the front seven for Oklahoma State ratchets up the pressure, and they're able to get to Thompson there. And, yes, that Texas offense on the last series clearly looks a little shaken up. So a pick six, and then the series after three and out. Cameron Dicker from the five gets it off. Presley on the sideline, and they just step out of bounds around the 30. Tomorrow on Fox, it's one of the oldest rivalries in the NFL as Aaron Rodgers and the Packers battle Justin Fields and the Bears for control of the NFC North or other regional action. Check local listings for the game in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. How about rookie Justin Fields? 11th overall pick. Struggled in his first game against Cleveland. He got sacked nine times, rebounded against the Lions, and then last week went to Las Vegas and beat the Raiders. So he's 2-1. Getting ready to play Aaron Rodgers. Last year, we were watching him Joel in Columbus. That's right. And he was a pleasure to watch in college. And just developed ever since the first game we saw him play until he was leaving Columbus. Just always got better. Martin. Some people feel that this young man, Tate Martin, senior, may be a Sunday player. Aaron with the tackle. I think he is. He's got the frame. He's got the athleticism. We saw one drop in the end zone today. That's got to get corrected. But 6'3", 186. He's got some wheels as well. Second down and six at the 34. And a hand at the wall with a big opening. Close to a first down. Rocker Meyer. <laughs> the defender on the play. Five-yard gain. Important series here for Oklahoma State. Can erase the deficit. And it's Ward again, putting that hard foot in the ground. I don't know if he gets there. Keandre Colbert stops him. I think they're going to give it to him there. A nice little second effort from Warren. And he is able to move the chains here for his.
his offense. Just a hard-nosed runner, a workhorse. They give him the ball 20, 25, sometimes even 30 times a game. First down to the 40. Illegal snap, number 51. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. This is center, Godlewski. Transfer from Miami of Ohio, played a ton of football at Miami of Ohio. So he's an experienced guy, even though he hasn't been in an Oklahoma State uniform for long. Sixth year of eligibility. One of these, what I would call COVID seniors, other call them super seniors. That experience and strength has paid off for them on the offensive line. Empty backfield for Spencer Sanders. Trips at the bottom of your screen. Sanders. Looks the other way, and it's Owens. Jamison with some great defense. He already has a pick in this game. Yeah, that's been a good battle over there. And he's done a really nice job, Deshaun Jamison. He's a senior from Houston, Texas, Lamar High School. Took advantage of an air and throw from Spencer Sanders. Got that pick here earlier in the game. Second down and nine. Warren picking his way forward and he is shot down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Just missed a cut here, Gus. Watch as he could have cut back to the right side. Right here, it's blocked perfectly. All he's got to do is go to his right. He can pick up more yardage. He tries to bounce out around the center and there's nowhere to go in traffic. Third down and nine to the 41. And a timeout called by the Cowboys. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, Eddie Fresh, and Big Game Bob standing by with the State Farm halftime show. We miss those guys. They're not with us for the first time since the start of the season. And for the first time all season, we have Southern California weather out here. It's 72 and That's sunny. Right. It's beautiful today. <laughs> oh, man. Here's a handoff to Warren. Warren following his blocks. Hops forward and first down, Cowboys. How about that run? Beautiful run. And again, remember earlier in the game, they kind of gambled on third down, running on third and ten. Almost got it here. He's able to get it with that nice jump cut. Sanders. And a nice throw. Beautiful catch. Rashad Owens in front of Deshaun Jameson. As you mentioned, they have been really going one-on-one -on -one against each other. And if Jameson's going to continue to bite on those routes and try to be aggressive against those type of routes, they're going to have to double move him and go deep. Second down and eight at the 48. Clock not a factor here with two timeouts. Great field position. Spencer Sanders. Standing strong in the pocket. And throws a beautiful ball. Another catch. This time, it's Blaine Green, the freshman from Allen, Texas. Good protection from that offensive line. And Sanders was able to wait and wait and finally get that throw across the middle. Gain of 18. First down at the 31. Warren. And Warren, not this time. As he's roughed up and taken down. The LSU transfer, Ray Thornton. Yeah. And a timeout on the field. 35 seconds remaining in the half. Back to Austin after this. Seventeen to ten. Texas. But Oklahoma State. Really starting to turn it up, find a rhythm on both sides of the ball. Just one timeout left, 35 seconds. Don't want to really complete this ball short of the chains. You'd have to burn that timeout. And start thinking about that clock and how they're working towards the score. Second and 12. 
Here's a screen and blown up. Great job, Ojomo, with pressure. Benda also in on the play, number 33, for the Longhorns. They're fortunate that that was an incompletion. If he catches that, they're going to tackle him right there. The clock's going to run. They have to take their last time out, and they would have lost yards. So actually fortunate for Oklahoma State that I was an incompletion. Here's the play. It's, it's most critical play of the half for them in order to try to get points. You just got to think Tay Martin's always the guy that they tried to target. Maybe they go there here. Third and 12 at the 33-yard line. Sideline pass caught. Martin trying to get upfield. He won't pick up the first down, but it'll be close as Josh Thompson was there defensively for UT. Well, now what you got to do on fourth down. Well, look at this. They're going to actually just snap the ball. Maybe try to get him to jump offside. Nope. Timeout for Mike Gundy. Boy, that was that was misplayed by Oklahoma State. I'll tell you why when we come back. 30 seconds. seconds remaining in the first half Oklahoma State down by seven now out of timeouts and they're going to bring in Tanner Brown for a field goal but because they tried to hurry up to the line of scrimmage and act like they were going for it they take a timeout with 12 seconds now after the kick they still have to kick the ball off if you're gonna take a timeout and kick the field goal wait until three seconds left in the half then take the timeout and then this kick would end the half and you don't have to kick it off Tanner Brown from 39 yards away and now Steve Sarkeesian he'll use his timeout and make Tanner Brown think about it Texas with two more left he's kicking right into the wind it's not gonna affect him on on distance on this kick but just looking forward with that timeout situation you know what this is gonna do is it's gonna probably allow Texas to return the kickoff Okay, so if they make this, now they got a kickoff against the wind. You could put Bijan Robinson back there, like Reggie suggests, return some kicks, right? I mean, again, this is this is some mismanagement here that's going to benefit Steve Sharkeesian with another chance at the end of the half. Oklahoma State will get the football to start the second half from 39 yards away. Tanner Brown. And it's perfect. 17-13, Oklahoma State grinding. Eight seconds left. Big game for both these teams. The winner in the driver's seat to head to the Big 12 championship game. Texas will have a bye next week and then followed up by back-to-back -back road games at Baylor and at Iowa State, Oklahoma State. They got another tough one next week. They head to Iowa State. Ames, a tough place to play. Followed by a game at, I mean, at home against Kansas. Deshaun Jamison, he's taken three kicks back for touchdowns in his career. Two kickoff, one punt, dangerous return now. He's back there with the true freshman, number eight, Xavier Worthy. Probably the fastest player on the team. A short kick fair caught around the 30 with eight seconds remaining and Texas with two timeouts Cameron Dicker such a successful player in this Big 12 as the place kicker. His career-long 57 yards. They have two timeouts. Where do they have to go, Joel, to get in Dicker's range? Basically about the 40-yard line on the opposite side of the 50. They've got two timeouts left, eight seconds. They would have to throw something right down the middle, probably a seam route to get there. They run it instead. Robinson will get a first down. Clock will stop with two seconds. While they move the chains. And Texas will let time run out. 17-13, Texas on top of Oklahoma State at the break. Time now for Rob Stone and the guys with the State Farm Halftime Show. 
right, Gus, Joel, thank you. And yes, we welcome you to State Farm Fox College Football Halftime Show. Glad you're with us. Rob, Brady, Reg, Matt, Coach Stoops here with you. Reg, how many times during Big Noon kickoff did you bring <laughs> up number five, Bijan? I brought it up a lot, and, and, and deservedly so, because when you watch Bijan play the game, um, and here's the other thing that I said before and earlier in the show is that I see so much of myself in Bijan with the way that he plays the game. Um, let's just let's just get right to the film. Yeah, man. slow down, man. Let's keep let's keep the Bijan fest going. I want to get to it, Rob. State Farm halftime highlights: 13 carries, 74 yards, three grabs, 38 yards. Reg. Yeah, and it, with Bijan, it's not about stats. He's gonna get his stats, yes, but. Getting the football in his hands is a premium because he's a playmaker. He makes plays from anywhere on the field, running the football, catching the football. And when you have a defense like Oklahoma State that likes to play a lot of man coverages, you're going to get a lot of mismatches, natural picks, which we saw on that play right there. And it's perfectly set up for a guy like Bijan. And, he, and even Gus, Gus is texting you during the Texting during the me. Call? <laughs> we text and we talking. <laughs> What is Gus texting you, man? About Bijan. About Bijan. <laughs> it's all about Bijan and Reggie. I think Texas defense was a big question mark, especially after the performance last week, giving up nearly 700 yards of total offense, 340 rushing yards versus Oklahoma. How would they respond today? And I'll tell you what, they were lights out in the first half. They didn't give up a touchdown. Obviously, they had the pick six, Oklahoma State. But all over Spencer Sanders, great on third down. They tackled well. They rallied well. They didn't give up very many explosive plays. A couple pass plays there toward the end of the first half. But I thought all around, Coach, just a really good performance, all three levels with the takeaway from last week. You know, big jump for them. Yeah, Spencer Sanders is struggling throwing the football. And offensively as a whole, they're 3 of 10 on third down, primarily because of they've been in long yardage too often, third and long too much because of penalties or a, a sack on first or second down. Uh, I, I expect them, though, to come back. But in the end, they're, they're, they're really doing a, a, a poor job, you know, on, on the offensive side, especially on third down. Yeah. Well, they did get some momentum there going towards the end of that half. Spencer Sanders was 5 of 6, 40 yards, helped them get to a field goal. So and don't forget, they're getting the ball out of half. So this was a huge drive, in my opinion, I think, to get this Oklahoma State team feeling like they got a little something going here now offensively Matt you touched on it you know so far I've only really gotten two field goals remember it was a pick six that got them to those 13 points but getting the ball out of half we asked the question before this game how really good is Oklahoma State right now they're hanging around they're hanging around if they can put some things together keep getting the ball to Jalen yeah. Warren on the ground um, Texas's defense hasn't really been able to stop him so far uh, I think they're gonna hang in this game on the flip side their defense we talked ahead of the game about how they can confuse Casey Thompson and they confused mm -hmm. them for a pick six they that kept it. them in the game. Yep. 225 total yards of offense, though, for Texas. The last two meetings between UCF and Cincy have both been decided by three points. Can the number three Bearcats put some distance between themselves? Big News Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. We're ready for the second half, and it should be a good one. 17 to 13, UT on top of OSU as we begin the third. Gus Johnson along with Joel Klatt, and both teams doing some really good things in that first yep. half. Bijan Robinson for Texas showed that he's the real deal, yep. and that Oklahoma State defense, they're tough as nails, had that pick six. They made a play when they needed it, right, and, and kind of turned the momentum of that, that first half, but really it was about Bijan Robinson and the creative ways that you can get him the ball and exploit some of the coverage that Oklahoma State was playing. Let's take a look at our second half connection brought to you by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected with AT&T 5G. Here you're going to insert a, a linebacker actually as a fullback. He takes two linebackers. You free up your running back. He does not have to pull anybody over. Just find the lane. But here you take advantage of that man-to-man -man coverage I was talking to you. This is a mismatch. Bijan Robinson on a linebacker. He's got the leverage. He's got the speed. Beautiful ball by Casey Thompson there. But then how about the pick six? Brought Oklahoma State right back in this ball game. Terrific job by Jason Taylor jumping that route, stepping in front of that pass, and taking it the distance. Here are your scoring drives for each 
team. Oklahoma State, they've scored a couple of times offensively, 22 plays on those drives, two field goals. Of course, their touchdown was a pick six. Texas, three drives they've scored on, 22 plays, two touchdowns, and a field goal. So they've been able to punch it in when they've had their opportunities inside the tent. Cameron Dicker will kick it away. Dominic Richardson is the deep man. Second half underway from Austin. And they'll start from the goal line. Richardson up the sideline. And he'll crash forward and get close to the 35. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Tack. Gus just caught up with Coach Gundy. And overall, he was pleased with the way it ended. Pick six, you guys pointed out. It was huge for them. But he said the biggest issue is right now we're killing ourselves with these penalties. Unfortunately, we got to clean that up. The guys responded well because when you're playing Texas, a couple big plays, they capitalized for Texas. Quick injury update linebacker DeMarvion Overshawn. He's in street clothes. Asked Stark about his loss. He said it's a next man up mentality. Our defense is playing well. He's not worried about Casey Thompson's confidence, but he said this is all about how we respond in the second half and finish this one to show who we are. All right, Jenny. Thank you very much. Texas showing blitz. Sanders gets it off to Cassidy, and Cassidy with a terrific gain. Jalen Four brings him down, but it's a pickup of 18 yards. And that front seven for Texas, they were selling out in that second quarter to try to stop the run of Jalen Warren. And so they come out right away, Oklahoma State, put that fake right into the face of the defense and spin out into that boot action, and it's wide open for Braden Cassidy call this a slide when this tight end is going to slide all the way across the formation and all you got to do as a quarterback is make sure that you're getting enough enough depth so that a free rusher can't get you right away Sanders does that and it's first down Oklahoma State with a longhorn down now oh, Josh Thompson is the injured longhorn he missed the TCU game with a concussion and he was involved on that tackle as Cassidy was headed up that right sideline. Remember Cassidy from right here in the Austin area, got 6'2", 240, so a, a big fella. Josh Thompson from Nacogdoches, Texas. Now remember, Joel, there's a Nacogdoches, Texas, and a Nacogdoches, I think that's how you say it, Nacogdoches, Louisiana. Well, what's the difference? One's in Texas, one's in Louisiana. <laughs> and Josh Thompson gets up, walks away. It's just pronunciation. It's just a pronunciation. It. It, the one in Louisiana, you don't call it Nacogdoches, you call it Nacogdoches. The one in Texas, I believe you call it Nacogdoches. First down. Here's Warren straight ahead. Off a of bobble snap, Jalen Fool. Well, now you're going to have the depth of this Texas defense really tested. And they were thin at the linebacker spot and in the secondary coming in. And now, as Ginny told us, overshone, not in the game. And now Josh Thompson leaves the game. And we'll see how Texas can hold up defensively. Second and eight. Play fake. Sanders sets up deep in the pocket, lets it go. And almost intercepted. Dangerous pass. And good coverage by Jade Barron intended for Presley. Well, and here's the replacement for Josh Thompson, is 23. Jade Barron, and he goes up and almost gets that one. Gets a right hand on it as he kind of collides with Presley. And now a good opportunity for Texas to try to get off the field on their first series of the second half. Third down and eight from the 40th. Sanders in trouble. Sanders just flicks it away and incomplete. Breck Texas bringing some great pressure. Ogofu in the backfield. Yeah, watch Ogofu, and he's going to just spin and be right in the face of Sanders almost immediately right here as a free rusher. That is a bad feeling as a quarterback. Sanders just tries to get himself outside of the pocket so he can throw that ball away. Nice design there from defensive coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski was able to get some pressure on Sanders on third down. Tim Hutton. Jamison, the deep man. Let's it go over his head. And 
into the end zone for a touchback. Tonight on Fox, it's a Pac-12 showdown as Dorian Thompson Robinson leads the rushing attack of UCLA against Dylan Morris and Washington. It all kicks off tonight at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on Fox and the Fox Sports app. You know, Washington has struggled a little bit on their run defense. Michigan got after them a bit, Oregon State, and that's where UCLA is strong. And you take a look at since 2016, their resurgence this season. They only had two weeks where they were ranked. Prior to this year, they've already been ranked in four weeks. They're four and two. So Chip Kelly, Zach Charbonnet, Dorian Thompson Robinson getting things done in Westwood. Zach Charbonnet, the Michigan transfer. And they'll give it to Robinson on first down. And look at E. John Robinson. Game nine, Harvell Peel with the tackle. I don't know, Joel, in my opinion. It seems like Texas isn't giving them the ball enough. Well, I mean, they, they, I know you have to be balanced, but you do have to be balanced, and you just have to you have to watch the workload. And this is Bijan; he's going to come off the field. That was his 14th carry. They've already thrown it thrown it to him three different times. And you don't want to necessarily expose him too much. But remember, against TCU, he had 35 carries, 82 yards to Robinson. Now Roshan Johnson comes in. They see with the tackle. They pick up the first down. Especially with his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, that's get right. lined up on a linebacker, man. That's, that's a right. big play right there. Huge advantage, isn't it? We already saw that on that touchdown catch. He's got three catches for 38 yards. He did take that one into the end zone when he was lined up on the linebacker in main cover. First down and 10 at the 31. And it's caught. Nicely done. Xavier Worthy turning it up. The freshman high stepping and finally brought down in midfield. Harvell Peel with the tackle, but it's a gain of 19. You know, sometimes you just got to take the easy throw when it's in front of you. And right here, you've got soft coverage on the outside from the corner. And Xavier Worthy is able to just stop in front of Jarek Bernard Converse, get an easy completion, and then you see some of the speed and dynamic athletic ability as he runs after the catch. First down and 10 at the 50. Play action. Thompson. Scrambling. Thompson. Turns it up, and Casey Thompson using his legs. Gains 12 yards. Devin Harper there to usher him out of bounds. The quarterback's job is to always make the offense right. Watch the coverage down the field. They do everything perfect. Nobody is open here, but Casey Thompson has the ability to still make the offense right. He sees the green grass or turf, if you will, on the left side, and he takes off. That's a great decision, and he moves the chains. Again, the season is the backup to Hudson Card. And it's Robinson again. Bijan Robinson. Give him the ball. Touchdown, Texas. 38 yards. New York, get ready. Because B. John Robinson is going to be there when the dust settles. Great block on the outside. Watch Christian Jones. He's going to get a block right here, and that seals the edge. When you give this guy the edge, see ya. It is gone. He finds the seam. He turns on the juice, and then that little cutback, one-on-one -on -one in the open field. You're almost never going to tackle number five. Touchdown, Longhorns. 15 carries, 120 yards. Three touchdowns, two rush, rushing, one receiving for B. John Robinson. Big B putting in work today. Cameron Dicker for the extra point. And it's good. 24-13, Texas. Best player on the field. Show it off in Austin. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Wendy's, official breakfast of NCAA football. There have been a lot of elite running backs to play at Texas, including Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams and the Tyler Rose. And they have another one. The John Robinson, sophomore from Tucson, Arizona. Look at the numbers today, folks. 120 yards rushing, 158 total yards, three touchdowns. And we're just getting started in the second half. Dicker kicks it off. Presley. And 
Oklahoma State starts from the five yard line. It's Richardson. And Richardson with a decent return. Let's go downstairs and check in with JT. What do you got? And what stands out, Gus, about Robinson when you ask players and coaches to describe the running back, they all say, player or person, because he is equally great at both. His smile lights up a room. His work ethic lights up the team. It's hard to find anyone who will say anything negative about him. And it kind of goes back to why he wanted to go to Texas. You know, it was a big deal when he decided to go here over Ohio State, and he has stuck to his word. He said all along, getting Texas back to where it needs to be is my focus. That is what he is continuing to do, and wow, he's leading the way today, Gus. All right, thank you very much, Jenny. What a wonderful young man. He's having an outstanding performance today and this season. First down and 10 for Oklahoma State. They've been resilient. And they'll hand it off. Warren picks up a couple. <laughs> They're going to have to do something here, though, in order to keep touch with Texas that they haven't been able to do all year. And that's score a point in the third quarter. They're the only team in the FBS yet to score a point in the third quarter this season. So something is going wrong outside of the halftime. And they've got to find a way to drive the ball and keep touch with Texas' explosive offense. Second down and eight, quarterback run for Sanders. Didn't fool anybody. Ojimo. This defensive line has played really well so far today. Remember, this is a team that gave up 340 yards rushing basically against Oklahoma. It looked like he had a hole, and then it was just closed as the defensive end, Collins and Ojimo were right there. And another third down opportunity to get off the field. What we've seen from Texas is pressure, bringing the linebackers forcing Sanders to get the ball out of his hands early and put pressure in his face. Third down and seven at the 31. And it's Warren. Tries to cut it inside. Unable to. And he'll go down short of the first down. Devin Richardson. First contact for UT. Boy, I know we've seen them run it a couple of times on third down and long, and they got one almost the other. But this one, this was heavy run defense only one safety deep again the defensive line winning the line of scrimmage Warren ba barely able to get even back to that blue line which is the line of scrimmage away with a little bit of a face mask there that could have been a huge penalty to go for Oklahoma State four three and out for Oklahoma State Jameson would love a chance to return it get away from the football takes the Oklahoma State bounce all the way down inside the five yard line They'll mark it at the seven. A 60 yard punt. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. And by Ram Trucks, Motor Trend's truck of the year for the third year in a row. Welcome back to Austin. John Robinson putting on a show today. Look at the numbers. Oklahoma last week 139. Today 158. Three scores. Get to see him play some more right now. First down to 10 at the 7. False start. Number 75. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. You know, the, the way that Texas' defense is playing and the, the ineffective nature of the Oklahoma State offense, this is the Cowboys' chance to try to create momentum for their offense, create a short field. Similar to what we saw last week, we did that Iowa Penn State game, that Iowa defense continued to put their offense in a good position. Robinson. And getting back to the defense for Texas, what have they, what are the adjustments they've made? What have they done? What are they getting right? What did they correct? Really, two things. One is, we haven't seen the missed tackles that have plagued them. They've been a, a better tackling team today. And then I think their defensive line is just winning the line of scrimmage to a better degree, a more consistent degree than they did a week ago. And th those two things, that's how 
That's how thin the margin is. You know, and, and we know Oklahoma State's offense is not Oklahoma's offense. Correct. And Oklahoma with Caleb Williams at quarterback was a different dynamic, in particular with his ability to run the football. You saw that on the fourth down play in which he went 66 yards. But that's really where Texas has improved, at least today for me, is their defensive line and their ability to tackle in space. Third down and nine for the Longhorns. Robinson, the single back. Snap. Thompson goes down. So Oklahoma State doing a nice job on defense, and they have a good chance of giving their offense a short field to work with. Well, that was just a, a totally ineffective series. Here, Thompson goes back to hand and just slips out of his hand. It looks like he took that bandage off of his right hand. Remember, he came into this game. His thumb, right thumb, was banged up. He had a bandage on it. Didn't look like it was there. You wonder how good his grip is right now. Cameron Dicker, back of his own end zone. No pressure. Presley with the fair catch inside Texas territory. A 43-yard punt. We'll take a break. Coming up, Oklahoma State. Great field position to start this drive. The Texas Longhorns are no stranger to being in close games since 2017. They have been in 29 one-possession games, which is second most in the country. 24 of those games have been in conference, with their most common opponents being Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. They lost last week to Oklahoma 55-48, to but have won the last two against Oklahoma State. First down and 10 at the 47, best field position of the day for the Cowboys. Richardson in the backfield. They give it to him. Gets through the hole. Close to the 45. Got to get back to getting the quarterback outside of the pocket. Remember that boot game that's been successful. They've run it twice. Big yardage each time. Second down and nine at the 46. Sanders. Incomplete. Martin the target. That's Josh Thompson, looks like, back on the field for Texas. Remember, he was injured on one of the previous series, got nicked up, and now again a third and long. Coach Stoops talked about it at halftime. One of the problems with Oklahoma State offensively, they've been in third and long the entire day, and that's when the pressure is ratcheted up from Texas's defensive front seven. Third down and nine. Sanders. Standing in the pocket, delivers to the sideline. That was short, intended for Presley. And a flag has been thrown. He's thrown fairly late. I think Ray Thornton is the one that hit Spencer Sanders on that play. It looked like he hit him right when he threw it. I'm just wondering if he took him to the ground. Is a huge penalty right there because Oklahoma State had no juice on offense. Really, the two series during this half. Here's Thornton watching. He hits him right here. Maybe is he going to drive him into the ground? Come That's on, what they're going to call. Come on, Joel. Well, when you drive that him, it's not a penalty, is it? I mean, listen, it happened to me a million times, and the flag wasn't thrown. But that was back in 2005, right? I mean, th to, in today's day and age, if you drive him into the ground late after the step, after two steps, they're going to call. Him. Maybe they should just. Put a flag on him. Ford with the tackle. Richardson running the football. Oklahoma State gets another break. Loss of one on the play. Second down and 11. And they've got to take advantage. Remember, they haven't been able to stick it in the end zone with their offense. Their touchdown was a pick six. They've got to find something here on offense to get going. Play fake. Sanders rolls out. Buys time. Guns it. And Throws it at the feet of Martin. Their first and second down plan is just not working. Every set of downs, it's just hand the ball off, nondescript run play into the middle of the line on first down, drop back on second down, Sanders runs for his life, and then it's a third and long. They've got to mix it up on offense. Here, I think you got to go to your best player. Capitalize on that last penalty. Tay Martin has got to get targeted number one somehow, some way. 
Third down and 11 from the Texas 32. Spencer Sanders, screen. Richardson with room. Nice run. Richardson still moving, dies forward and gets to the six. Adam Mora with the saving tackle, 24-yard gain, first down. Chains keep moving for OSU. And finally, a little change up from this offense. Great blocking down the field, and right here just outruns the defensive tackle to Vondre Sweat. Richardson is able to stay in bounds and create a bigger play, and now setting up his offense inside the 10. First down and goal at the eight for the Cowboys. Richardson remains in the game. Sanders, the fade in the corner, incomplete. Rashad Owens covered by Deshaun Jameson. I mean, they got to find some other way to get Sanders going. Gus, he just launched the ball out of bounds on a fade. Like, you can't do that as a quarterback. You're inside the 10. You can't throw it eight yards out of bounds. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar can't catch that pass. Second down and goal at the eight. Richardson. And Richardson ridden down. Texas defense starting to feel it now. No gain. Jalen Ford. Ogofu combining on the play. Brings up third down and goal at the eight. Richardson runs it. He's got blockers, but will not get to the end zone. And he's down inside the five. You think maybe four down territory? Do you go for it here? I or do you take the points? I think they're going to take the points and make it a one-score game. You got to make it a one-possession game. If it's a multiple, you get you know you got to at least condense it to that point. That's keeping Texas at least within reach, but. That offense has got to find some continuity, in particular inside the 10-yard line. Another red zone stop for Texas. Tanner Brown from 21 yards away. And it's good. Under five minutes to play in the third, 24 to 16. Texas. Texas on top of Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys three drives inside the Texas 25-yard line, three field goals. And right now, that's the story. Remember, the last four meetings between these two teams have been decided by seven points or less, and we might well be looking at another one today. And as you know, I mean, we've done a, a ton of great games this year. And when you get into those tight games, what comes at a premium? Taking advantage of your scoring opportunities. And Texas has done that so far. Oklahoma State has not. Cowboys send it off. Jamison will let it go over his head and end of the end zone. So let's flash back to last year. Oklahoma State entered last year's game versus Texas as the only undefeated team in the Big 12. But Texas put an end to that. The game with the overtime with Sam Ellinger. Uh, Joshua Moore for a touchdown. Then Joseph Asai sacks Spencer Sanders on fourth down to end the game. Asai finished the game with two tackles, 12 tackles rather, six tackles for a loss and three sacks. Longhorns won at 41 to 34. Well, we've seen really good Texas offense. We've seen really bad Texas offense. When they've been good, everything runs through number five. Handing it to him, throwing it to him. He's got to touch the ball. From the 25, they start. And they'll give it to Robinson. Michelle Robinson stopped by Tyler Lacey for the gain of two. He's most effective when they run that stretch play, and they do it into the short side. Gus, remember, we were talking about that last week. That means the towards the Texas bench, or the short side of the field here down towards the bottom of your screen. And what Oklahoma State has done now, look at this little adjustment. They've walked out the defensive end to be an edge player on that short side as to not give them the edge for Bijan Robinson. Now Robinson, the receiver. And Thompson over the middle. Completes the pass. And it's Roche.
Roshan Johnson for a gain of six. First half, they had a huge completion down the field on a third down because Oklahoma State, they're great on third down defensively, but it's because they sell out. They play heavy coverage down low right at the sticks. They talk about treating the first down line like the goal line. You watch all these guys start creeping up near the line of scrimmage, and that's when you can get a little bit of a big play behind them. Third and three, fumbled snap. Thompson just throws it away. Second time that's happened today. You just get the sense that he might be struggling with that hand, that thumb. And now maybe that was also low. Looked like that snap was maybe a little bit low towards his right foot. Jake Majors, the center. But there's certainly been a problem. We've seen that a number of times today. He's telling Sarkeesian right there. He's like, look, it's I was just trying to throw it away because the snap was so low. And Sarkeesian's got to be frustrated with the lack of offensive production in some of these series. And right on cue, Sarkeesian <laughs> shows his frustration. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Dicker. Presley. Allows it to take a bounce, and it will be down at the 20. 48-yard punt. Don't forget, next week, Big Noon Saturday is heading to Ann Arbor, where the undefeated number eight Michigan Wolverines are hosting Northwestern. Michigan is one of five Big Ten teams ranked in the top ten, and they're looking to prove that they belong. Joel, Jenny, and I will be in Ann Arbor. It all starts with Big Noon kickoff at 10 a.m. Eastern on Fox. Well, they've been fun to cover. We did their game against Wisconsin. They escaped Nebraska last week with a three-point win. Uh, blew a 13-point halftime lead in that one, but they've got some players now. Aiden Hutchinson, their defensive end, heck of a player. Cade McNamara, their quarterback. Blake Corum, one of their running backs. First down. And it's Warren. Speaking of quarterbacks, what does Oklahoma do with their quarterback situation now? I think you've got, you've got to stick with Caleb Williams after the way he played in that second half against Texas. I'm sure Texas fans would expect that as well. I think Oklahoma fans should expect that as well. I just don't think that we've seen the last of Spencer Rattler on the field for a year. Second and four to 26. And a first down. Martin with the catch. Spencer Sanders completes it. Oklahoma State in striking range. First and 10. Eternity remaining in this game. Spencer Sanders bouncing, winds up down the sideline, and a flag is coming. Josh Thompson will be called for the penalty. Pass interference, number nine, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. We've seen big penalties on the Texas defense. You know, a couple on third downs that have continued series. We saw it on the last series. Here's another one. Thompson clearly holding, then just tackling Tay Martin to the ground as that ball is headed his, his direction. But what we haven't seen yet is Oklahoma State take advantage of some of these penalties and find some continuity on the offensive side. Texas, eight penalties for 70 yards. Warren charging ahead. The front seven has played really well, haven't they, against the run, especially a week after giving up the amount of yardage that they did in the run game. They gave up a ton of yards to Arkansas in the run game, to Oklahoma, and here a, a strong rushing team in Oklahoma State. They've been very good up front. Second and seven. Warren. Jalen Warren. Picks up two. Third down and five. Big third down for Oklahoma State. They need this one. trying to find some magic. Spencer Sanders runs the option, pitches it, Warren turns it up, Warren chopped down, great play by Josh Thompson. Thompson went out with an injury, came back in. Terrific open field tackle for the young man from Nacogdoches, Texas. I think you've got to go for this in this field position. I know they haven't had a lot of success, but they're going to punt this one away, putting a little faith in their defense. Remember, their defense, for the most part, have played well, in particular in the last couple of series where Texas has not shown any form on offense. I think that's what ultimately is making the decision for Mike Gundy. Tom Hunt. 
Hutton. Hunting from the 40. Jamison comes up to field it. And it will be down inside the 20. A 28 yard punt. Boy, this defense has answered the bell for Texas. And Mike Gundy is trying to find something offensively. And he knew that this was going to be a struggle. Talking to him th this week and then even today before the game, he said, listen, we're going to try to find a way. And then he looked at me and he says, I don't know how, but we're going to try to find a way. And they have this year. Remember, they played an ugly game against Boise State. They threw the ball for just over 80 yards. They had a rash of injuries, a wide receiver and running back L.D. Brown, a six-year running back, went down. That's when they went to Jalen Warren. They found a way to win that one 21-20 on the road. But they're going to have to reach down deep here and try to figure out some way to get momentum out of their defense. First down and 10 of the 19. Play fake. Thompson blasted as he throws the football. Incomplete. Whoa. What a hit by Malcolm Rodriguez. Bringing the pain. It looks like Thompson is still down. We've been seeing quarterbacks go down everywhere in both pro football and college football. Look at this. Oof. Last week it was Sean Clifford for us. The week before, Sean Clifford from Penn State. The week before, Graham Mertz, Wisconsin. We saw Jack Cohn go down for Notre Dame. Joe Burrow went down for the Cincinnati Bengals. Russell Wilson is out for the Seattle Seahawks. The young quarterback from the New York Giants had a concussion last week. He's gone. Quarterbacks have been getting crushed. Now you're going to go back to the man who started the season as the starter. Very talented freshman, Hudson Card. Right here in Austin from Lake Travis. 61%, 300 yards and two touchdowns on the season. He'll get a nice ovation from this crowd. He has handled this situation very well. Losing his job to Casey Thompson, now coming back in in a tight one-possession ball game in Big 12 play. Second and 10 at the 19. Robinson scooting forward. Now Hudson Carr, 6'2", 200, a redshirt freshman. On the season, he's 24-39. 314 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, and he'll go out. Thompson right back on the field. Get the sense maybe he just got the wind knocked out of him. Had to take a play. Tough player. Comes from a great family, a great football family. Third and six. Thompson. Incomplete. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Joshua Moore, the intended receiver. The ball game we got here, folks. Texas, Oklahoma State. Back for the fourth in a minute. Big Noon Saturday, sponsored by AT&T Business. Start of the fourth quarter. 24 to 16 is our score. Texas scoring seven in the third. Cowboys three. Gus Joel Jenny. Mikey Rule Books with you from Austin, Texas. Texas punting. Dicker. Off a great kick. Takes a big bounce all the way. Oh, into the end zone for a touchback. 77 yard punt. Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. It's been really the B. John Robinson day for Texas on offense. 166 total yards, three touchdowns. He's done it in a number of different ways. Handed it to him on the edge, thrown it to him out of the backfield, thrown it to him as a wide receiver. He's been sensational, folks, and really the one bright spot 
for that Texas team on offense. They have shined thus far on defense, in particular stopping the run. This Oklahoma State team wants to run the football as we see a Longhorn down. And that Texas defensive front, a week after getting shredded by OU in the run game in Kennedy Brooks, they have shown up and they have played really well and forced the game into the hands of Spencer Sanders, the quarterback from Oklahoma State. Looks like that's Keaton Crawford, sophomore from Tyler, the injured Longhorn. But you have to like the way Oklahoma State continues to grind, continues to fight, especially that defense. I feel like Mike Gundy needs to eat an Oreo and separate out. Hanging around. Hanging, Hanging around. around. You know, I mean, it's like... It's, that's just the way it feels because it doesn't Texas has outgained them 316 to 228 this offense haven't been able to get into the end zone the pick six obviously have, have been a, a huge moment in this game for Oklahoma State but it doesn't matter none of that matters that's what you've got to think about if you're the Oklahoma State offense if you're Spencer Sanders it doesn't matter what has happened in this game it only matters what's about to happen you got to clear your mind and clear the look for yourself to throw the football down the field. Remember, Texas gave up a big lead last week against Oklahoma. First down at the 20. Sanders throwing on the run, and it's caught. Beautiful job by Brendan Presley to haul that one in for a 14-yard gain. And that's when they've been at their best, in that boot game. Fake the run inside. Get the quarterback outside of the pocket. Use the aggressive defense against them. Their fast flow, trying to stop that run. There's the control. There's the two feet in. Beautiful catch. First down at the 34. Warren with room. And Warren spins. And will be dropped at the 40. Us in the run game, when you control the flow of the defense, when you just let them get after it and fast flow and hand the football off, they're going to stop the run. But when you control them with that boot game and you get outside of the pocket, it slows them down for just a beat and then it opens up that run game again. Second and four. Warren again gets downhill. Warren gets through the hole. Warren, what a run for Jalen Warren. 28 yards. Thompson stops him. But he's picking him up and putting him down now. Beautiful vision to find that left side. Nice block on that left side by the cow Cowboy back, Braden Cassidy. And then Warren's able to explode out that left side, picking up some speed, getting inside Texas territory. Warren, 22 carries, 108 yards. He's averaging 4.9 yards per carry. First down. Oh, and they snap it back. Picked up Sanders. And it'll be dropped at the 40-yard line by Ray Thornton. He wasn't looking for the snap. He was looking at the back next to him, trying to signal some sort of motion. And the ball was snapped. He was never looking at it. You got to pick it up at that point. You just got to make whatever you can and not make a good decision. There you see he's looking at his back. He's signaling to him to motion or do something formationally in the set. And now they put themselves way behind the chains. A loss of seven. Second and 17 from the Texas 40-yard line. Sanders, he'll run it. Sanders, and he'll dive forward, short of the first down, but a good run for Spencer Sanders, a gain of 15 yards. Beautiful block by Josh Sills, the left guard. He double-teamed the nose guard right here, and then he's going to go up and in, get into the second level. Watch as he goes now to the second level, and he's able to get David Benda, the linebacker. That block allows Sanders to get way down the field and a potential conversion here on third and short. Third down and two at the 25. Sanders, sideline, caught first down. Cowboys, Tay Martin again. And Tay Martin is having a really good day. He is the focal point to the passing game. And anytime they give him some soft coverage, they like to stand up and just throw him the ball on the outside. Josh Thompson's in coverage. He's done a nice job today. But every time he gets that soft co coverage, in particular when they can get a conversion, Sanders just stands up, takes the easy completion. First down at the Texas 20. Warren. Warren. Pushing forward. He'll get seven and a half, maybe eight yards. Jalen Ford stops him, but they give him eight. And 
right now that Oklahoma State offensive line is really firing off the football. They're veteran. We got some transfers up there, sixth year players, and they're doing a nice job. Second and two at the 12. Warren again. And he's close to the first down. It depends on the spot. But they give it to a first down, Oklahoma State. Well, now the question becomes, we've seen this movie before. Oklahoma State, a quality offensive series. They're in the red zone. They have to capitalize with touchdowns. Field goals are not going to cut it. they got to find a way to get this in the end zone. First down and goal at the 10. Warren running left, breaks it back, jukes through the hole, and falls down at the 8. Ojimo with the tackle. Three drives inside Texas's 25-yard line. Three field goals. That has to change for Mike Gundy. Second down and goal at the seven. Play fake. Sanders rolls out. Fires. Touchdown, Cowboys. Presley found a soft spot in the end zone. And Oklahoma State is in. Business. I keep telling you, when they run these little boot action type of plays, they find the open spots. Watch as Presley's going to come across the formation. Then he finds the soft spot. You see him just back up into the end zone, and Sanders is able to find him. And now in an eight-point game, it makes it a two-point game, and they'll go for two. Drops, throws it, and they won't get it! What a job by Jalen Ford! But Oklahoma State gets the six points. Spencer Sanders finds Presley. We've got a ball game in the fourth here in Texas. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. 24-22 as expected between these two teams. Oklahoma State ranked 12th in the nation. Texas 25th. Jalen Warren for the Cowboys with 46 yards rushing on that last scoring drive for the Cowboys. 10 plays, 80 yards. That was their best drive of the day. Jamison, the deep man. He'll start from the five. Jamison stumbles, gets up the sideline, and finally dropped as he crosses the 30. Let's go back to the two-point conversion. Yeah, because Gus, right now, it's the difference in the game. Check. Jalen Ford, he's the linebacker right here, number 41. And as soon as he sees the back, Warren take off towards that side. Look at him just go. He slides out, slides out, and now he's in a perfect spot to make the tackle, and he didn't hesitate. You know how you are you become a great open field tackler? Go get them before they can get you. That's a beautiful job. And remember, Overshone is out in this game, the linebacker, Jalen Ford, one of the backups from Fis Frisco, Texas. And right now, he's made the biggest play of the game so far for Texas, maintaining that two-point lead. But Texas's offense has to respond now. They give it to B. John Robinson. And Robinson will get back to the line. Scrimmage, no gain. This is eerily similar to last week. And I know it was a bigger lead that they have, but they couldn't run the ball in the second half. Robinson and that offensive line, more in particular, just couldn't do anything against OU's defense. And so the sputtering offense allowed Oklahoma to come back in that game. And here, Texas is sputtering on their last three. Three straight punts, and here, behind the chains on second down. Second and 10. Let's see if they can get the ball to Robinson in space. Here's an option, and Robinson, and he'll go out of bounds, and he'll lose a couple of yards. Bernard Converse defensively for the Cowboys. That brings up third down 
and 12. Oklahoma State's defense with a chance to get off the field and potentially give their offense something to work with. And this is their strength. Third down defense. Remember, they understand where those chains are at, where the line to gain is at. They love to put pressure on the quarterback and play those heavy safeties right at the first down mark. Third and 12. Thompson steps up in the pocket and sacked. Colin Oliver. And Texas got trouble now because Oklahoma State is playing some ball. They're doing a great job. Watch this. He's going to come inside and work against the guard. Can't get there, and then he, he's able to get the quarterback to the ground. And Colin Oliver, just a freshman from Oklahoma City, has really come on. He had two sacks last week against Baylor in their last game, and here it gets to the quarterback. Cameron Dicker sends it away. And fielded by Presley, who gets up the sideline over the 35. Coming up. Oklahoma State with the football, their defense really working hard. Last week, Texas let the Red River Showdown slip away from them. Leading 41 to 23 in the third quarter over rivals Oklahoma, they were outscored 25 to 7 in the fourth quarter, allowing Kennedy Brooks to score two touchdowns, including a 33-yard run with three seconds remaining in the game. It was Texas's fourth straight loss to OU. Oklahoma State takes over at their own 37. Jalen Warren is starting to rev up at running back for the Cowboys. Warren, here's the option. Now the reverse. Presley gets to the sideline. Presley stays in bounds and finally taken down by Deshaun Jamison after a 17-yard gain. That was a nice call. Yeah, and we've seen that option play, that old-school option like you've called a couple of times, but then this time they bring Presley right in between it on the end of round. First down from the 46. And here's Warren. He'll throw back to Sanders. Sanders picks it up. And incomplete is the call. Good idea, bad execution. And you can tell this is a kitchen sink type of series now inside of eight minutes to go. They had some success running the football. They came out here on this series, and it was about the trick plays. And this one, just a little short, and Sanders can't get back to that ball, and it's incomplete. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 46. Warren. Warren at the 40. Warren down the sideline. Jalen Warren. Putting in work. That's a gain of 20. Texas is going to get out of position. Watch the pressure here. It comes too far up the field. What does that allow? It allows the running back to cut inside of it and get down the sideline. 26 carries, 141 yards. Now Sanders screen. And Texas was ready for it. Big number 93 to Vondre Sweat. A loss of one, and there's an injured long run. I think that is Sweat, who made the play, who's slow to get up. Well, the coaching staff talked to us, and they, they said, in particular, the defensive coordinator, Pete Kwiatkowski, said, we just didn't finish last week. And right now, these Longhorns fans, this is eerily similar. Texas has got to finish. Time permitting. Don't forget to join us after our game for College Football Extra, presented by Crypto.com. Second down and 11. At the 27-yard line for Oklahoma State, the Texas 27. Spencer Sanders hands it off to Warren. Warren squirts through the hole, gets to the 20. Flag thrown.
personal foul, hands to the face, number 98. Defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. Penalties, self-inflicted wounds by Texas today. Boy, hasn't Warren been sensational today? Unbelievable. Here's 98, just a hands right into the face. Number 70, Hunter Woodard. But Warren now 27 carries on the day. First down and 10 at the Texas 11. We'll get it again, crash forward and pick up a couple, but you have to give a lot of credit to Casey Dunn, the offensive coordinator, wide receivers coach, and the associate head coach for Mike Gundy's Oklahoma State Cowboys. He was able to figure out the Rubik's group. Remember, they were struggling offensively, and then he finally got to a screen pass. There he is on the left in the black shirt. And he got to the screen pass, he got to the boot pass, and it's opened up the run. Here's Sanders running it. Conversely, on the other end, as you see Warren, Jalen Warren has become a multi-dimensional player. It looks like B. John Robinson has become one-dimensional. Well, that offense for Texas has not done their defense any favors. And now their defense, though, with a huge play here. Third down, the ability to try to force a kick. Now inside of five minutes and 40 seconds in the game. Third down and six at the seven. Cowboys can still get a first down. Sanders pulls it down, and Sanders will go nowhere. Great job by the Texas defense. Jalen Ford there, Alfred Collins as well. That brings up fourth and six. He's trying to go to Tay Martin. Check it out. Here's the outside. They're trying to get the one-on-one -on -one with the Oklahoma State wide receiver. He's the best on the team, but they've got double coverage, and Josh Thompson played it perfectly. He kind of plays outside leverage. Sanders has nowhere to go with the ball. He tries to run it, and there's the teeth of the Texas defense. Tanner Brown has been perfect today, three for three. Good from 29, 39, and 21. This one is from 24 yards away for the lead and a flag. False start, number 48. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Tanner is unproven. He's been very good today. Their normal kicker, Alex Hale, had a knee injury in the offseason, just has not been the same. They've moved on now to Tanner Brown, the transfer from UNLV. He's been good today. From 29 now, and the lead. Tanner Brown. And it's good. With 4.37 to go. Oklahoma State takes a 25-24 lead over Texas. Steve Sarkeesian has some work to do. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Coming up next on Fox, the ALCS continues with a huge game, too. The Red Sox take on the Astros. Catch the action next on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, Jenny Tab with you. We've got a game now getting juicy here in Austin. One point of fair. 25-24, Steve Sarkeesian's first year. What does he do now to get his offense clicking? Give him five good reasons. <laughs> this one kicked out of bounds. What a mistake by Oklahoma State. Texas will get good field position to start the drive. Tanner Brown, he's been perfect with field goal. And he's been the reason they're up by one, but this has been a great comeback from Oklahoma State. This was the touchdown. Spencer Sanders finds Presley in the end zone. They did miss on the two-point try. But then after a quality defensive series, that offense went right back down the field, got the field goal. Texas has been great in the red zone defensively, forcing all these field goals, which is now what puts them in position to be only a point down here inside of five minutes. But remember, Texas has a kicker that has performed in pressure moments in the past. First down and 10 at the 35. Robinson still moving. Bijan Robinson 
Stopped by Lacey. There is the young man, Cameron Dicker. And who could forget his performance at the Red River Showdown not too long ago? Now a senior. His career long, 57. There's some confusion here right now. It looks like they're sending Jake Majors off the field as he's limping number 65. He's the center. So now you're going to reshuffle. 69, Andrew Carrick is going to come in, which means that Kerstetter, 68, is going to move down to center. Second and one. And it's caught, but not enough for the first down as... Xavier Worthy makes the grab and he's dropped immediately by Thomas Harper. No gain. This is when you should just quarterback sneak. You snap it quick, quarterback sneak, and move the set of downs. Out of the shotgun. And they blow it again. Wow! Brock Martin looked like a busted play. A loss of two on third and one. That short yardage game, when you get into the shotgun, you take your time. What you invite is that crashing style of defense from everybody. Look at everybody start crashing, and they can't get the tight end across the formation. And now on a fourth down, Sark will stay on the field. Texas going for it with 326 left. Against a defense that has been tremendous today. Fourth and three. Thompson to throw it. Steps up. Wants a run. And get there. Texas turns it over on downs. Brock Martin. Israel Antoine. Unbelievable. I've told you on these critical downs. Third down and now fourth down for the defense for Oklahoma State. Watch right when Thompson wants to throw the ball. All of these players sitting right there at the line to gain. There's nowhere to go. There's no holes in the defense. Thompson then has to run it himself, but they're waiting for him as well. They play so heavy at the chains. This is one of the reasons they're one of the best teams in college football at getting off the field. Last year led the country in third down defense. They're again top 15 this year, and here on a fourth down, they get the stop because they're willing to sell out at the line to gain. So Oklahoma State takes over. First down and 10 at the 42. 3.12 to go. They'll hand it off. Warren. And Warren gets inside the 40. Jalen Ford with the tackle. Te Texas calls a timeout. We'll step away. 3.07 to go. Back to Austin after this. Twenty-five, twenty-four. Oklahoma State. As you look at the yards today, three fifty-seven for the Cowboys. Warren with twenty-nine carries, one hundred and fifty-two yards. Second down and seven. Warren again with a hole. Warren. First down, still on the move. Cuts it back inside. Inside the 10, and he gains 29. On second and seven, Oklahoma State thumping and bumping. I have no idea what Texas is doing with two high safeties when you know you're going to get run against. You've got to stop the run. You cannot allow them to get a first down. They play two high safeties as if they're in a soft prevent defense. You can't do that. You've got to sell out to stop the run, similar to what Oklahoma State did on the fourth down play. Get heavy down inside the box. They played soft, and they got burned. Warren has been sensational. 30 carries, 181 on the ground. First and goal. Sanders will run it. Touchdown, Cowboys. What a comeback for Oklahoma State. Gus, they let him score. The defense was instructed to let him score, which is actually the smart play at that point. Keep your timeouts. Try to get some time. So Gundy, at this point, gosh, you almost you almost feel like, do you go for two here? 
you got the momentum. I would think about going for two because going for two makes it a two-possession game. Tanner Brown lines up. Kicks it. It's good. Mike Gundy has been conservative today. Beautifully conservative. He took the three when he needed the three and finally got a couple of sixes and a seven. 32-24 OSU. 32-24 Oklahoma State leading Texas. And all year long, Oklahoma State, they found ways to win. They beat Missouri 23-16, Tulsa 28-23, Boise State 21-20, Kansas State 31-20, Baylor 24-14. They were down big in this game now. They have a 32-24 lead with two minutes plus remaining. Jamison up the sideline, and he's upended at the 23, knocked out of bounds. Inability of the defense to come up and play tough against the run for Texas. I still it still blows my mind They had two safeties deep When they needed to get stops Once that first down happened Steve Sarkeesian said all right, let them score I want to retain as much time and all my timeouts as I can Even though they haven't had any success on offense at least now He feels like he's got more of a legitimate series to try to go down and tie this ball game up First down and 10 to the 24. Texas with two timeouts. Over the middle, incomplete. And the thing that I've noticed more than anything, B. John Robinson, we haven't hardly called his name in this fourth quarter. Offside, number nine, defense lined up into the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, first down. They tried to get him the ball right there on, on a little isolation play right over the middle. But you've got two Oklahoma State defenders. Remember, this is a veteran team. They're going to know where number five is at all times. Every defensive back. They're going to know that he's the one that can change the game in an instant. And that's the type of veteran play that you're going to get out of this defense. And here's Thompson over the middle. Oh, intercepted. McAllister. Tanner McAllister out of bounds at the 30. With 1.57 to go. And for back to back weeks, Texas has imploded. And this is the inexperience of Casey Thompson. You get into this situation for one of the first times, and what you want to do as a quarterback is force the ball down the field. But watch as McAllister, he sinks. This ball has to go to the flat route. It's got to go to number 80, Cade Brewer. He's the open man. You force the ball deep to try to get it to a playmaker and Xavier Worthy because you think you've got to press it down the field to score a touchdown. But you can't score a touchdown right away. You have to continue to throw the ball to the open man. Brewer was open. He tries to go down the field to Worthy. And guess what? Tanner McAllister says, thank you very much. He threw it right to him, and he picked it off. So a first down. At the 32, Warren slashing again. Timeout, Texas. They have one timeout left. Welcome back, 32 to 24, Oklahoma State leading on the road. Mike Gundy has been a brilliant strategist in this game today. Second and four. Warren again, he'll lose yardage, but Texas may have to use their final timeout. And they do. We'll step away for 30 seconds. Gundy determined to play to his team's strengths. The running game with Jalen Warren, the kicking game with Tanner Brown and their defense. Texas can get a stop. There'll be a field goal opportunity. If it's missed, Texas would get the ball back with about a minute left. Third and six. Warren. First down, Cowboys. Game over. 
And isn't it fitting that it's number seven? 32 carries, 185 yards, five a pop. And when they needed it the most, Casey Dunn, the offensive coordinator, where'd he go? His most reliable player, Jalen Warren. What a performance from Jalen Warren, the workhorse. You look at his carries over the last few games, 32, 27, 36 in his three previous, 95 carries. He comes in here, hey coach, give it to me, 32. Warren with 118 yards rushing in the fourth quarter. His fourth consecutive 100-yard game. Time now for today's celebration moment, sponsored by Allstate. Well, we know who's going to be celebrating today, and it is the Oklahoma State Cowboys. This is the fourth down stop. That's when it was real, folks. That, that defense doing what it does best, getting off the field. Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, playing that heavy style coverage right at the chains, suffocating, not letting Casey Thompson and that Texas offense breathe at all. They shut down B. John Robinson in the second half. He couldn't get going. Texas gained barely one or two yards in the fourth quarter. What a team win for the Cowboys. And after trailing 24 to 13, Oklahoma State scored 19 straight points. And the Cowboys go on to defeat the Longhorns and remain undefeated. Mike Gundy puts on the visor, takes off the shades, and he's ready to go. Here's Jenny Taft. Coach, congratulations. You've now won six of your last seven in Austin. At one point, you're down 14. How did you com complete this comeback? Well, our guys did a good job. I tell you, it was a really, really good job coaching adjustments. But our players have been very, very resilient. And uh, I couldn't be any more proud of their competitive nature. And we were able to rush the ball in the second half. And then defensively, we were fantastic. Jalen Warren has been a factor. I know he's new to the team this year. He came to the Big 12 to send a message. How important has he been for this offense? Well, he, he's been a difference maker. And what he brings to our team is unselfish toughness. He's unselfish. He's humble. Plays hard. He's tough. So, you know, those guys are valuable. Congratulations. Go enjoy it. Good. Thank you. The final score here at Texas Memorial Stadium. Oklahoma State 32, Texas 24. Coming up, we will take you to Houston for game two coverage of the American League Championship Series. So long, everybody.